To generate even higher voltages, Tesla introduced the so-called extra coil. Let's examine this coil and how it's designed and used. When we look at a quarter wave resonating coil, we see a lot of current in the lower end, while almost no current in the top part. Therefore, the induction of the top windings of the coil does not come into play as much as that of the lower windings. As the charge gets compressed in the top end, the capacitance of this part of the coil comes into play. One could say that only half of the coil acts as an inductor, while the other half acts as capacitance. But the change is gradually over the entire length of the coil. To use the inductance of the entire coil, one would have to add a top load with a capacitance as big as that of the coil. With a smaller top load, we are not using the entire inductance of the coil. With a larger top load, the charge gets diluted and the voltage will not be as high. But we don't want to add a top load just yet. We want to add a so-called extra coil. Before we do though, I have to talk about the velocity factor of a coil. Here is how we calculate the velocity factor. If the velocity factor is 1, then a virtual impulse is traveling through the coil at the speed of light. If the velocity factor is smaller, then this impulse travels slower, and if it's higher, it travels faster. Note that it's not an actual impulse, but an apparent impulse. It looks as if. The interesting thing is that this velocity factor depends solely on the ratio of the length of the coil over its diameter. These formula give a good approximation. Another interesting fact is that if a quarter wave coil's length over diameter equals the golden ratio, then it has a velocity factor of 1. For a half wave resonator, this ratio will need to be about 3.11. I use this factor as an indicator of how easily an electric impulse can travel through a coil. Then I compare this to other situations where waves travel from one medium into another and look at the rules that apply there. If a wave travels from one medium where it has a high velocity factor into another medium where it has a low velocity factor, then a large portion of the wave energy is reflected and only a small portion enters the new medium. As you want the energy to accumulate in the extra coil, this coil should have a high velocity factor, and the secondary should have a low velocity factor. We see this in the Colorado Springs situation, but also in all of Tesla's drawings. The secondary always has a velocity factor smaller than 1, while the extra coil most of the times has a velocity factor greater than 1. But this is just my interpretation. Here is how Tesla explains it. Some people believe that the extra coil and the secondary are both quarter wave resonators. What would this look like? I think it's clear that this won't get us the results that we are aiming for. It is also not what Tesla describes in his Colorado Springs notes. Tesla says that the extra coil should be a half-wave resonator, which would look like this. Note that the current in both coils is always in opposite direction. It therefore helps to wind these coils in opposite direction, as Tesla always shows in his drawings. When you search YouTube for magnifying transmitter, you will find many examples where people just added an extra coil to their Tesla coil and believe that now they have made a magnifying transmitter. Not only have they no clue about what a magnifying transmitter really is, they also do not get the extra coil in the way Tesla explains it. But their way does work and is definitely a lot easier and cheaper as you can save a lot on your primary capacitors. This is how they do it. Let me say it again, 
a freely resonating extra coil is not a magnifying transmitter. Otherwise, this would be a magnifying transmitter too. A magnifying transmitter can even be built without the use of an extra coil. The extra coil only makes the design more compact. For a brief introduction, see this video. Thank you.